Nikon Z9. Unstoppable. Hi, Ray here. I'm glad you could join me. Well, it's been quite a week, huh? The launch of the Nikon Z9 came to the west coast of Canada at 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time last Wednesday. I prepared myself with tea and crumpets, <laughs> ready for the long-awaited event. The specs were confirmed. One amazing breakthrough after another. I don't know about you, but the elimination of the mechanical shutter, even though it had been rumored, was a stunning announcement. The focus acquisition and tracking looks to be outright amazing. And did you notice? <laughs> Nikon included bicycle tracking as per my request. Okay, to be clear, because someone asked in comments on my last Z9 video if Nikon were taking tips from me, I don't know if that's the case. I was really just joking. But I'm very happy they did add bicycles to the vehicle tracking. It looks like between eye, face detect, and bicycle recognition, I'd be very happy shooting bike races with a Z9. Admittedly, the title of this video is just a little bit clickbaity because I'm referring to my own position in relation to the launch. I'm late to this party because, let's face it, over the last week there's already been a hundred informative videos we released examining every detail of the Z9. And frankly, I've been feeling it would be redundant and presumptuous of me to jump on the bandwagon as exciting as the party's been, with nothing to go on but other reviews and rumors. How meta would that be? <laughs> and I'm not talking about the new face of Facebook. So I decided to play the wallflower. Shipping of the Z9 is supposed to start on December 30th, in theory. Outside of Nikon's control is the world shipping and supply problem. And speaking of uh, shipping and supply problems, I went out last week to record a video on these events and the fourth teaser, which was rather un underwhelming. It showcased the blackout free EV. And my production was disrupted by the most powerful storm ever recorded in the North Pacific. And I gave up recording anything. Meanwhile, there's a container ship stranded in the Strait of Juan de Fuca out here. It's on fire, and it spilled over a hundred containers, which are now washing up on remote Vancouver Island shores, spilling their contents all over the place. There's all kinds of products in the mix, everything from toxic chemicals to household goods, including refrigerators <laughs> and maybe some electronics. I mentioned this just to highlight for those blaming Nikon for being slow to deliver on promises that the world is a complicated place, especially, it seems, during these times. In any case, I'm guessing there will be a big demand for these cameras, not just from pros, but also from enthusiasts who want the boasting rights of owning a truly groundbreaking camera. Think about it again. This is the first camera to do away with the mechanical shutter mechanism. So now we have cameras without the mirror and mechanical shutter of traditional single lens reflex cameras of yore. <laughs> I'm running out of superlatives. I had a whole list of specs and stuff written out here to compare between, say, the Sony A1, Canon's R3 and R5. But here's the thing, and I've mentioned it before. This kind of dry technical stuff bores me to tears, at least dissecting it ad nauseum. And I know the same is true for my audience, because I can see from analytics that people bail on those kinds of details. And more than that, I absolutely recoil from the kind of controversy that seems to be so popular that YouTubers chase it for clicks and dollars. I just can't do it. It makes my brain hurt. And this week, it just kind of came to, to a head. Uh, pun intended. So, I've just given it all a wide berth, like a half-submerged cargo container. I've seen a few people get uh, schooled this week, before and after the Z9 rollout. Novice YouTubers who've debased themselves, chasing controversy, thinking... They were getting one up on more experienced uh, channel celebs. We already see controversy over the Z9, everything from diehard DSLR users dissing the whole idea of mirrorless cameras without ever trying it, to the usual tribes defending territory as if the Z9 was a shot across the bow of their cargo cult, instead of the christening of a new camera with advantages for the whole industry. And I'm just not interested 
in adding to all the noise. However many clicks or hours of watch time that might bring to me. Sorry if this sounds negative. I'm actually trying to keep things positive. I mean, don't we need to accentuate the positive against a backdrop of a troubled world? Aren't there bigger fish to fry? So I've been assessing my own content. I've been around the business for more than four decades. I've messed around with YouTube for a decade, uh, but not as a primary business because um, photography. As far as cameras go, I've used a lot of different brands over the years from view cameras through medium format to 35 millimeter. And my best-selling work, what I guess you could call my vintage work, was all shot on film with completely manual cameras. And about the charge that Nikon was late to the mirrorless party. To quote one of my all-time favorite bands, the Talking Heads, this ain't no party, this ain't no disco, this ain't no fooling around. <laughs> Nikon have bided their time, they haven't been fooling around. Aside from the fact that the original Z cameras were great in many ways and their successors even better, the Z lenses are all incredible. They've pursued the kind of patient and measured R&D that have given this amazing new camera sans mechanical shutter, thanks to the read speed of the new sensor and processor. They've given us 20, 30 frames per second and a new high-efficiency raw 14-bit compressed file to make it all possible. 120 frames per second, 11 uh, megapixel JPEGs for those of us who might be trying to capture photo finishes at the velodrome. They've given us a video camera that can record 8K 60p video internally, ProRes. And from all reports, it doesn't overheat. And from what I've heard, there's much more to come next year with firmware updates. For the most part, I, I avoid brand comparisons of the latest gear because I'm not qualified to compare them. For instance, I haven't used a Sony A1 or Canon EOS R3 or R5. And return viewers will know I've been happy with my original Z6s. They work for the kind of stills and video I've been making for the last couple of years. Most importantly, my clients have been happy with the images I've produced for them. One reason I embraced the Z system is because I had an existing collection of Nikkor lenses built over decades, and I wasn't about to switch to another brand. But the decision before me is whether I need <laughs> the Z9, whether it's seen as an industry-wide game changer or just Nikon catching up with the competition. It doesn't matter to me. It's the flagship Nikon I've been waiting for. So I'll be ordering one. And in order to finance the 7,000 Canadian, I'll be liquidating a bunch of gear, including my last Nikon D800, which I've been holding on to for its 36 megapixels. Obviously, the Z9's 45.7 megapixel sensor will more than replace that. I just call my local camera store, who I've been dealing with for decades. Trade in value, or at least what they'll be giving me for my last DSLR body and F-mount glass, plus my first uh, mirrorless system from Fuji, gets me very close to the Z9 price of $7,000 here in Canada, when it's available. Then it's just a matter of buying the expensive <laughs> CFX cards and extra batteries. And the new computer I'll need to deal with that 8K video. I'll be selling off some of my too many bikes to finance that. <laughs> I can't believe I'd ever admit I have too many bikes. And going on what we've seen so far, the amazing tracking and focus improvements will eclipse anything I've ever used before uh, when it comes to use for sports and wildlife. As I've said before, I welcome 8K video to maintain quality when cropping, etc. on a 4K timeline. And being able to record internally 10-bit analog, ProRes 422, and even 12-bit 8K and RAW, and 4K ProRes RAW video with a promised update, it's going to be amazing. To be clear, initially, we'll have the choice of 8 or 10-bit files with H.264, H.265, or ProRes 422, HQ. All very exciting prospects. So that's it for me, I guess, on the Nikon Z9 until I get one in my hands, which I'm guessing will be sometime in early 2022, I hope. Because the dealer just told me that Nikon Canada is not giving them a, a delivery date. 
So, back to regular programming until then. Take care of yourselves. Cheers. And we'll see you in the next one. Bicycles! I got my, I got my bicycles.